Because I see people all the time moaning about their jobs. Yeah. And uh, part of us thinks, well, why don't you just fucking leave? But obviously it's the fear and the uncertainty is where's the money going to come from? But mm-hmm. sometimes these people would be better off working in Aldi or Asda, mm-hmm. happier, just still earning a wage. Maybe it's slightly mm-hmm. less, maybe mm-hmm. it's different hours, whatever, but at least they'd actually be happier. Do you know, I think the other, the, the other challenge I think though, Luke, as well, is that sometimes it's actually not the job. It's kind of like in relationships, people have the same relationship just with different people. Yeah. The same thing, moving from relationship, or same thing keeps happening. That could happen in the jobs where people are like, should I leave the sh- job that stresses me out for one that's more happy? I'm like, well, that would make sense. Yeah. But what if it's not the job? Yeah. Yeah. Some, some what guy, if, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What if it's not the job? What if it's not the client? What if it's not the staff? Yeah. At some point, I've got to think, well, is it me that's making yeah. this stressful? Yeah. Or is it the job? Because some people can handle it. There's some people there that don't get stressed yeah. in the job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it, again, it's linking enough perceived value, linking enough perceived benefit. Yeah. I remember going on a course once and this guy was like, oh, he's all over the place. And he was like, right, I'm, I booked loads of holidays last year because I just wanted to get away. Yeah. That's why most people book holidays. But he's like, when I was on holiday, I was still overthinking because wherever I go, I am. Like, yes. I can't change that. Wherever I go, I am. It's yeah. still me there. Yeah. Like, I'm telling myself to fuck off because I'm still in the <laughs> same mind. I'm in a different environment externally, yeah. but internally, my environment's completely more or less the same. Yeah. I'm stimulated differently. I'm a little bit more relaxed. Oh, that's lovely. This is lovely. This is a new environment. Yeah. But inside, I'm still, well, what if this? Well, what if that? Well, what about this dickhead? Yeah. Well, what about that? They're not questioning their own beliefs yeah. and their own shit inside their own head. So yeah. no matter where they go, they're still going to be the same person. Yeah, and I think, that, right. I think that one thing that we do do, and our mind's job is it'll always try and justify our emotional state, where we're at. It'll try and get off yeah. the job. Yeah. I'm stressed out because of the job. I'm like, well, yeah. what if it's not the job? Yeah. What yeah. if you quit this job for less money and you get just as stressed in a job that pays you less money? It's not the fucking job. Yes. It's your thoughts about the job. Yeah. And yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Some jobs are possibly carry more challenges than others. But the challenge-free job doesn't doesn't exist. exist. Absolutely. Do you Absolutely. know what I mean? And stress is chosen, not given. Yeah. I've always like, I've, I've had to remind myself of that so much. Yeah. About stress being chosen, not given. Like, we're always in... We, we might not feel like we're in control of our choices, but we're always choosing what we believe is best for us. Mm-hmm. Like, we know this. Mm-hmm. Me and you have talked about this a lot, and you, you talk about that frequently. Like, we're always choosing what we think's best for mm-hmm. us. So we're choosing our own stress, because without that, like, some people would love to be less stressed, but a lot of people thrive on the, the go, go, go mentality. Mm-hmm. Always being on the run, mm-hmm. one job to the next, overwhelm this, because without that, be, they wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. They're thriving on the chaos, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. In I thrive on a bit of chaos. I'm all right with that. Yeah. Like, I, like, I think that that most people who want, they think they want, need more self-belief. They think they need more confidence. They just want to feel more certain. That's all. I'm, again, this is why when people ask me for me advice about jobs and businesses and should I leave this relationship, I'm like, well, I don't know because I am comfortable. I am certain that I can handle uncertainty. Yes. A lot of people crave certainty. It doesn't really exist anyway. That's the biggest fucking challenge. So we have to consider that again, that most stress comes from unmet expectations. Mm -hmm. And just moving jobs doesn't mean that your expectations are going to change. In fact, it might even get worse. Mm -hmm. You might think, well, I thought this job was going to be easier. And it's not because you still have to deal with people. You still have to deal with your thoughts about people. You still have to deal with money. You still have to deal. You know what I mean? It's like, like, I don't think just leaving the job is often the thing. However, you had savings. Yeah. What was your support network like? Because again, I just want to put up, put my myself in the shoes of people who are having this same discussion of where you you were at eight years ago, nine yeah. years ago, um, where you're in a position where you don't like the job. You've got an idea. You really want to do it. You've got a bit of money, mm-hmm. but then the other challenge is, oh well, no one supports me. Yeah. People are questioning me. Mm-hmm. And then they don't do it because they then blame someone else. So what's your, yeah. what's that whole support network like for you? There's a few things that I want to answer to that. One is, I think, when you have that, um, that certain people saying that, maybe they're actually going off their previous experiences with you, thinking like, well, you're fucking failed. You're full of shit. You're full of shit. You're yeah, you're full of shit, that. yes. It's like us men, it drive, it, and I know it drives you crazy, mm-hmm. like, how many people say one thing and do the other? Yes. We we so infrequently do what we said we'd do, mm-hmm. right? It's fucking Christmas. I'm getting back on it. I'm losing this weight, for example. Na- that's why 96, 7% of New Year's resolutions fail because mm-hmm. it's just repetition of things that they think are going to happen that they never follow up mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. So if, if you're getting judgments from people who 
are looking at your previous results, they're just going to judge based upon what they know about you. Yeah. And it, and it's, it, I think sometimes, for me, it was, I used to always respond with certainty. Mm-hmm. Even if I didn't feel it, I used to, they used to be like, well, what if this fails? I'm like, no, I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. But, but, but what if this? And I'm like, well, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Mm-hmm. I have to make this happen. Mm-hmm. It, it gets to the point where in my job, I was so miserable and I was so hating and anxious and angry so frequently that the only choice was to change. It's what's the what's the saying? You've said it before. If the the true change only happens when the pain of change becomes easier than the pain of staying the same. Staying the same, yeah. Yeah. So that's why anger is a useful emotion. Yeah, definitely. So I was angry, and I, that kind of pushed me. But the problem is that I, ca- I can't rely on anger to keep pushing me. It's like people's problem with motivation, yeah. isn't it? I'm yeah. pissed off yeah. this weekend. I'm fat. I've fucking done it again. Fuck this. I'm yeah. starting on Monday. Yeah. But then Wednesday, they feel more relaxed. Yeah. They can't get motivated because mm-hmm. they're just relying on one thing to push them forward. This mm-hmm. why anger is a great fuel, but it's not a continuous burner. It For, yeah, it, you know, I watched something about this. Get your start, night. doesn't it? But it yeah. doesn't I watched this going. last night, you know. I was watching this thing. You know, Joe Dispenza? I've heard of him. So, Dr. Joe Dispenza, as he's like, with a lot of the new age guys, he's, the, he's their man right now. Yeah. And for a few years, Arjuna's into him, for example. Okay. A lot of people who I know yeah, yeah. are into him, are into him, and I've been like, eh, it's not my cup of tea, but I've, it's one of those things where, do you know what? You know what I'm like? I'll be like, yeah, fuck that, fuck that, fuck <laughs> yeah. that. And then eventually it'll come to me. Yeah, right? Like, just, yeah, yeah, when I'm ready. So, this Joe Dispenza thing I've been watching, he was talking about this with anger and kind of these stress hormones. It's like a turbo button on your car. You can use it and it'll get you going, it'll move you a little bit faster. Yes. But eventually, it'll fuck your car if yes. you keep pressing it. It'll yeah. burn out a fuel yeah. very fucking Absolutely. quickly. Yeah. You can't. You can use it every now and again, but if you use it all the time, it'll fuck yeah. your engine. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the great thing about anger. Sometimes, but it's a, it's a one of those on the scale of con- the mat of consciousness thing. Yeah. It'll be, it would be a you're trying to force it all of the time. Yeah. Oh yeah, all the time. That's it's, not yeah. a nice place yeah. to live. 